Hello friends, you are watching Edis English Literature. I am Ardhendu De. Today, I am going to discuss an interesting topic, drama as a religious tool. Theater and religion have been interlinked since the Greeks and Dionysus. There is no doubt that drama is overwhelmingly popular among masses and that popularity is often time their death knell of creativity. We are focusing on the dawn of British drama here and trying to find out if it's a vehicle of religious propaganda or not. Drama is defined as an articulate story presented in action. The origins of drama have always been deeply rooted in the religious instincts of mankind. This applies to Greeks, Indians, Chinese, Egyptians and also Christians. There is a fundamental reason for this. Theatre and religion were one of the few things that all social classes in the world had access to. Theatre was a staple of informing and entertaining the illiterate and was also prized as an indulgent art form for the elite. Since theatre entertained everyone, the subjects tended to be more general and religion was one of them. In Europe, the church was the cradle of English drama. In fact, English drama originated as a vehicle of religious propaganda at the early stages. In their attempts to Christianize the Celtic island, the inhabitants of which were illiterate, drama was chosen as a mode of presentation and it was hoped that these spectacular and visual performances could have a better effect on the people. They might lure them or attract them into the religion of Christianity. Dramatized versions of biblical stories from the creation to the resurrections were popular in the Middle Ages. Their early history cannot be confidently outlined, uh, though it is widely accepted that the movement towards dramatizing Christian doctrines and biblical history was not sudden, but slow and steady progress. You can look at this graph that how Christian stories were slowly introduced into the stage of English. The medieval church approved the celebration and elaboration of the liturgy into dialogue in order to make its central doctrine of man's redemption simpler. In fact, the Italian enthusiasm for imitating and reviving classical drama and for formulating elaborate rules for its creation gradually spread throughout Europe but with very different results in different countries. English schools and universities embraced the new Italian ideas avidly in the mid-16th century. By the end of that century, however, classical dramatic practices had merged with medieval theatre practices and various popular traditions to create, to create a complex new kind of drama in England. As in Greece, drama in England was in its beginning a religious thing. Its oldest continuous tradition was from the medieval church. Early in the Middle Ages, the clergy and their parishioners began the habit at Christmas, Easter and other holidays of playing some part of the story of Christ's life suitable to the festival of the day. So, these plays were liturgical and originally no doubt overshadowed by a choral element and a kind of uh, rather infusion was there. But gradually the inherent human capacity for mimicry and drama took the upper hand and ceremonies they developed into performances. They passed from the stage in the church premises to the stage in the street. So, it was widening the scope of drama. 
the establishment in 1311 of the Feast of Corpus Christi provided a focus for a form of worship that was moving further from liturgy and further towards performances. By the middle of the 14th century, sequences of biblical plays were being performed all over the England. You know, the miracles, mysteries and morality plays are generic terms given to the such kind of English dramas of medieval times. Uh, I am roughly speaking from 5th century till to the 15th century. The term mystery play also called a corpus Christi play or simply mystery is sometimes used synonymously with miracle play. Some literary authorities make a distinction between the two designating as mystery plays all types of early medieval drama that draw their subject matter from gospel events and as miracle play all those dealing with the legends of the saints. By the name miracle you know that the miracles of the saints were in performance. These plays developed from the liturgy of the Roman Catholic Church after 1210 when a papal edict forbade members of the clergy from appearing on the stage in public. Such plays had considerable influence on the work of the great English dramatists of the 15th and 16th century. When the simple scenes from the Bible that had become part of the liturgy could no longer be performed on the priests early in the 13th century that I have just told, the miracle plays came into existence. These plays had as subject matter the miracles performed by the saints or more frequently scenes from the Old and New Testaments. Miracle plays uh, also known as saint plays is good form where presented at the time of Easter and other holy days. They gained formalized structure in the late 13th or 14th century and reached the height of their popularity in the 15th and 16th century. Miracle plays dealing with the legends of the saints were less realistic and more religious in tone than those concerned with biblical episodes and were eventually superseded by the latter. The plays were generally given in the cycle formats or sequences of related scenes, each of which required only a short time to perform. Each scene was acted by members of one of the trade guilds of the town, and the cycles presented the Christian history of God and humanity, and from the creation of human beings and the world to final judgment. The important cycles, which were named after the different uh, cities where it were being performed, uh, the Chester, uh, the Wakefield, the York, the Norwich and the Coventry place. The cycles were generally performed outdoors on festival days and particularly on the Feast of Corpus Christi. Each guild acted its assigned scene on its own wagon or float on wheels that is makeshift stage which could be moved from one place to another for repeated performances with ease. The Chester cycle is probably the earliest so the infant structure of the drama become part and parcel of the rituals of the church. The seasons of the year decided the subject matter of the church. Christmas, Easter, the lives of the saints formed the kind of subject matters of this drama and it was being decided by the very church authorities. In between these scenes, there had been some kind of development of interludes. Interestingly, to the scenes from Bible, the anonymous playwrights added interludes consisting of realistic comedy based on situations and ideas of a contemporary nature. So this kind of miracle plays, this kind of morality plays as well as a kind of interlude plays also make different formations of creating different sorts of dramas, particularly in comic situation. Sometimes known simply as morality, the morality plays 
was most popular in the 15th and early 16th centuries. It was designed to instruct audiences in the Christian way of life and the Christian attitude towards death. The general theme of the morality play is the conflict between good and evil for the human soul. The play always ends with the saving of the soul. The characters of the morality play are not the saints or biblical personages of the miracle plays, but personification of such abstractions as flays, gluttony, lethargy, lechery, sloth, pride, envy, hope, charity, riches, strength. Some of the moralities uh, play were anonymous, others were by known authors. The best known of the former types is everyone, which was composed in late 15th century. Uh, which probably was derived from a Dutch source but was thoroughly anglicized. In the play, the protagonist, every man, learns that everything material he has gained in life deserts him as he journeys into the valley of death. In the end, only the allegorical personage, good deeds, accompanies him. Morality plays from a bridge from religious to secular drama. The English morality plays every man that I have just told is written anonymously. Though miracle plays were no doubt written with a moral purpose, we often find that in their desire to be amusing and instructive at the same time, the writers of these permitted the amusing element to overbalance the instructive one. The liberty often taken with scriptural personages for the sake of comic effect and the frequent blasphemy and rivalry found in this place strange thought they seem to modern readers but no doubt eminently attractive to the rude crowd that witnessed the performances. But they can scarcely have tended to its edification or improvement. Morality plays prepared the way for Renaissance secular drama and focus on the structure between good and evil for the human soul. Our discussion might remain incomplete without mentioning the chemistry of these early dramas. Now, what are the elements of any successful drama? The drama and its stage, audience and actors. Now, these early plays afforded one of the favorite entertainments of the common people. If not, how did these dramas begot University Wits and William Shakespeare? The dramas were biblical types of the earliest, and stages were movable, makes it. The actors were sometimes the patron of a monastery sometimes the members of the trade guild. The audience was rude, illiterate and superstitious. But slow and steady progress of the mass religiosity, I mean the Christian conversion of this audience was made possible by prudent teaching of Christ. Now these dramas perfectly lead a perfect path towards mass awakening. This is all for this post. If you have any question, please ask me. I will try my best to give some answers. You can also visit my blog www.ordendode.blogspot.com for a related post. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.